All right, welcome back to Soccer Matters on ESPN 97.5. We're going to finish it off in big style here tonight. Uh, always presented by John Daspit and the Daspit Law Firm. It's daspitlaw.com, 713-CALL-NOW. You get in a car, boat, motorcycle accident. Uh, you might drive an 18-wheel. You might work construction. You need the best when it comes to a personal injury attorney. It's John Daspit, the Daspit Law Firm, daspitlaw.com, 713-CALL-NOW, and they are uh, supporting soccer. By the way, Lamont Brands, that's where you go, lamontbrands.com, for the T-shirts, uh, Soccer Matters T-shirts and hats, all the proceeds to the 501C Charity Snowdrop Foundation. American Soccer Now, he's Brian Charetta, frequent guest of this show, does great work. Brian, thanks for coming on. Thank you very much for having me on, Glenn. It's always a pleasure. All right, I saw the great announcement. You're going to the Olympics in France uh, next summer. Uh, you're, you're super excited to cover that. You've done a great job of covering these young players you and i spoke before we got on the air today u.s has not mm -hmm. been in the olympics since 2008 and you know we kind of got to just think about that for a second all that missed player development opportunity yeah i mean look they're getting good development on the club level but in terms of integration in the full national team it's a big setback isn't it i mean you and usually they the, the olympics happens two years before a world cup and you go back and you look at okay 2000 they qualified and you had Josh Wolf, Landon Donovan, and uh, John O'Brien go from marginal U.S. national team players to World Cup starters um, two years later. It was a big thing for them. Then in 2008, look at the list of guys who were kind of in that same thing. And then you know Maurice Adu, Stu Holden, Josie Altidore, Michael Bradley, Benny Fieldhaber. The list goes on and on. And then they were in much better shape to you know to really be part of the the national team in. Um, uh, uh, two years later at the World Cup in South Africa. And then when they don't have it, yeah, it's a, it it's provides a link. It, it breaks that link in the chain for, for teams players to have uh, really good competition um, leading into their the start of their, you know, being fully integrated with the national team. Talking to Brian Sharetta, American Soccer Now. And Brian, um, the coach of this Olympic team has been very much connected uh, uh, at U.S. Soccer, uh, Marco mm -hmm. Mitrovic. Tell us a little bit about him because I'm not sure the, the the American soccer public knows that much about him. Yeah, he was he was the U19 coach before he was hired, um, and before that he was really learning under Velko Ponovic, former MLS coach with the Fire. Before that, he was um, he worked with first of all working with Velko Ponovic when he was the Serbian U20 head coach in 2015, and they won the U20 World Cup. Then he went with, 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 with under Ponovic as assistant with the Fire, assistant at Reading, and then and then and then he broke off on his own and took the U19 job. Um, naturalized American citizen from Serbia, um, and uh, he, you know, this is a, a big step up for him. I mean, I think that it, uh, the initial plan was probably to have Mikey Varis, the last U20 head coach, um, take this job and have some kind of continuity. But then Mikey went with Greg Berhalter's staff, and you know, and and um, Mitrovic has done a very good job with the 19s. He's worked with guys like Ben Akramashi and um, uh, Esmir Baraktarovic and a lot of other really good top um, young American players. So players are very excited. They had a very good first camp last month when they beat Mexico two to one, and then Japan four to one. Somebody under the radar right now that, that we as U.S. soccer fans should kind of put in our memory banks right now. I know there's a number of them, so, so give us one or two. Yeah, I mean, on this team, I think, um, you know, a lot of them, well, if you want to go abroad, I think um, Rokas Puktas is, is up there. He's a starter for Hajek Split, one of the great developmental clubs and one of the biggest clubs um, in, 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 in um, Croatia and, and all of, like, really one of the Eastern Europe's, one of their big clubs. Um, you know, and then I think uh, domestically, I really think um, uh, uh, Duncan McGuire for Orlando. I mean, 15 goals across all competitions so far as a rookie, that's, that's incredible output. Um, you know, and, and I really like Brian Gutierrez, um, for Chicago, um, the midfielder, the playmaker. I think he's a guy who could, um, who could make a jump to Europe and do very well for himself. Uh, you know, he, he really is a good two way player. You know, those are, those are some of the guys I think that could, um, the other guys I think are known about on the Olympic team, like Gianluca, Gianluca Buzio and Tanner Tessman and those guys, but, um, you know, and John Tolkien, 
uh, I think that those are some of the really, you know, core guys of this of this team. But another good guy is, is uh, Bernard Camungo um, at FC Dallas, the former uh, refugee, naturalized American citizen. Great story. Born in a refugee camp, uh, came to this country with nothing. Makeshift balls he played on growing up, and now he's really lighting it up for FC Dallas. And um, and what a story it would be if he makes the Olympic team, especially on like the NBC coverage where they like or they, or they like to have those. Uh, those, those documentaries on those players um, that he would be just um, perfect for that. But it's a likable team. I really do like this Olympic team. McGuire, by the way, comes out of the college game too, which is yeah. very, very interesting. We're talking to Brian Sharetta, American soccer. Now let's talk about some of the names we know. Uh, let's start off with Serginho Dest, who was a regular at the last World Cup. Um, he's now at PSV along with Ricardo Pepe, starting to get playing time. That's good news, right? Yeah, I mean, after last year, it was a disastrous loan to AC Milan. I mean, he didn't play at all. Um, but you always knew his resume. Was, I mean, before before his twenty second birthday, he played Champions League for four different clubs. I mean, Ajax, Barcelona, uh, uh, AC Milan, um, and then now it's PSV. So, for, I mean, just to, it's had a, a, he's an unusual amount of experience for a player of his age. You know, it's just about, you know, that defense. Um, but look, PSV is so much better than everybody else in the area de Vizier this year. I mean, 33 points from 11 games, it's perfect. Um, so it's, uh, he's he's delivering, he's getting the minutes and he's doing well. Um, you know, and, and as for Pepe, he plays for Luke de Jong, under, under behind Luke de Jong. So the minutes are going to be a little bit limited there, but I think he's going to start um, showing he can play more so that Luke de Jong doesn't have to play as much at 33 years old for, for, or, but I think they're pleased with with Pepe and, and and Tillman to some degree too. He's a little bit more inconsistent, some highs, some lows. But um, you know, all three of the guys there, they're part of a of a perfect product there. That's probably going to run away with the Air Divisie. Ricardo Pepe, by the way, two goals off the bench. That is, uh, if you are looking for a Dutch Air Divisie team, it's America's team. It's PSV Eindhoven. All right, Eunice and Ernie Moore. Stewart too. Ernie Stewart's running. The, uh, he has a big say in that club too. So yeah, it's it goes into the upstairs levels. Eunice Musa um, mm -hmm. at Milan has played a variety of positions. Has played in the Champions League. We saw him mm -hmm. as a holding midfielder uh, against Dortmund. He's played high. Uh, that versatility serving him well. How do you think he's doing at Milan? Good. I mean, you know, last weekend he struggled a little bit because he had a cover for Christian Pulisic who was out, so he played on the right side. Defensively, I think he's he's in a tough situation when he plays out wide. Um, those wingers can be very tough to defend in those high leagues. They're very fast, very quick. Um, you know, he's a guy who's born to play the middle of the field, um, and uh, and he's doing well. I think um, when you look at his age uh, and, and and his experience, it's a step up for him going from Valencia to AC Milan. Um, you know, I think Valencia wasn't always put together when he was there, but. They struggled with coaches and everything else, but you know, now he's in a more stable system. You know, he looks the part. He has, you know, he's very tidy in possession, um, and I think he's ahead of the curve right now with where they wanted him to be. I think he's doing better than expected. Had a good World Cup as well, Yunus Musa uh, at Milan. Okay, speaking of Milan, Christian Pulisic seems to have found his club. He's been in excellent uh, league form. Mm -hmm. There's no question about that. He's got four league goals, had an assist to. Olivier Giroud in a 2-2 draw with Napoli. But uh, finally, Christian Pulisic seems to have a manager that fully believes in him. Yeah, you know, it's always been tough for him. I mean, it's, and I think that's one of the reasons why Pulisic likes Berhalter. It's, it's he puts him in a position he's familiar with and, um, and, and, he, and, and they get it done. Uh, there's a, there's, he seems to understand his, his, where, what he needs to do on the field and what's being asked of him. Yeah, I think, you know, it's good also that that they're cognizant of his injury history and and this was more precautionary why he didn't play over the weekend and why he was subbed out at the half in the la in the game before because of fatigue you know they really want to make this work um you know this this is an investment for them that that and a, and a player that they see as key as to what they want to do so yeah i think um with with christian um yeah he's in a great spot and and they're taking care of him too not just you know, playing them and running them to the ground. Let's uh, stay in the Serie A. Let's go over to Juventus and Weston McKinney at the mm -hmm. old lady, um, playing a number of different positions. Mm -hmm. Obviously, many of us love his spirit with the U.S. national team. Door has kind of been opened with the suspension of Paul Pogba. 
with testosterone and, and then uh, a gambling problem with Nicola Fagiolo. Uh, so the door is open a little bit more for him, uh, but he's in pretty good form for Juventus and getting the real minutes he needs. Yeah, it's one of the best success stories. I mean, you know, coming off a loan where they wanted to sell him to Leeds. If they Leeds had stayed up and avoid relegation, there was a trigger for a buy. So they were they pretty much thought he was done when when they shipped him off. So when you come back into a situation when everyone said their goodbyes to you, you know, it's a little awkward. But he's been he's been great, and and I think he's exceeded Juventus's expectations. Now he's playing. He played a little bit in the middle. Um, for a couple games there in a row, but generally most of his minutes this year have been at the right wing back position. You know, he's, he's really blossomed into a well-rounded player that can play a number of positions. Well, he can fill in things, even if it's not where he wants to be playing, he can do an adequate job, a lot of places, just because he has a great understanding of the game, a better understanding than he ever has. He's learned a lot. And he doesn't make as many mistakes right now. Um, that you know, he sometimes he was knocking him was always he was, a little, he was a little sloppy. But um, you know, look, he, he's um, he's earned Allegri's trust. It's not the most exciting brand of soccer over there, but I mean, he's just uh, just to be able to play at that level and, and and being able to fill in a number of different positions and, and earn the trust of the manager that they need to have him on the field. You know, it's it, it's it's a really remarkable success story I didn't see coming when I saw him. I thought they were going to try to find another buyer for him right away, but they got him back in the lineup. Um, I, I think even Juventus is surprised at where where um, McKenney is right now. This goes to show you that uh, things can change between club and player uh, based yes. on dynamics, based on injuries, based on how your value may soar. So that and he's just getting much more mature as a person, too. You know, there's that. I mean, listen, all these young guys we watch on the national team, we're seeing them mature. I think that's one of the exciting things uh, about them heading into 2026. Follower and Balogun at Monaco, uh, kind of a push right now? Yeah, I think he's he's doing well. I think it's a, Monaco's always an interesting team. It's, it, they're, they're typically very good. They're, they're, their support is not intense. Um, it's, it's a laid back kind of a club, but I mean, uh, you know, it, it helps so much that they, you know, the, the stars kind of aligned for 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 him to move there. The, the, their starting striker had an ACL tear in the spring in, in preseason. They needed to fill fill. They needed to find somebody, and they found somebody who was on the market who scored twenty two goals in the same league last year. Um, you know, it, you know, they paid a lot for him, but you know, it, he's such a he's his movement is so good, and he relies so much on the chemistry of building of his teammates around to be able to identify his runs and get behind the defense and, you know, having a, an understanding of him and his teammates of knowing where he's going to be. That's the challenge with the national team, you know, is, is develop that chemistry and it takes time. I think he's going to be just fine in that league. And um, I don't see him going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, you know, look, they're one point off the, the top of the table behind PSG. So it's, um, they're, uh, it, he's in a good spot. Brian Charetta, American soccer. Now let's go to Gio Reyna struggling at Dortmund with a lot of injury. Uh, played 45 minutes, got taken off after 45 recently. Mm. What's his situation? And, and you know, we've said this for well over a year. Durability seems to be mm. a big question mark with him and his career. Yeah, I think, you know, it's – I think they kind of went into the whole season at, um, you know, with Dortmund saying, like, we got to be very careful for three, four months, maybe in the first half of this, the whole first half of the season with Gio. Um, whether or not they believe he's part of their future, um, this is a club that relies heavily on selling players, and he's he's a very good player. And they're going to need to play him at some point to sell him, and they're going to, but at some point, they're going to need to show he can go more than four. Even if they want to get rid of him, they're going to need to play him because um, he's that talented. So, I think, you know, they're probably not looking towards a January move. Maybe if they do it, it's a loan with an option to buy. They, they, they're going to, they're trying to bring this in in stages. And you can kind of see where it's not playing 45 minutes. Now, I think the other day he got 60 minutes or 60 or 70 minutes. I don't know, but somewhere around there. So they're ratcheting it up. And then he, then it got dialed back again over the weekend. There's a, probably a real, um, minute load specifically that they're operating under and then every month or every several weeks they they expand upon that 
Gio Reyna, uh, we'll keep an eye on that one because uh, my gut tells me he's going to be moved from there at some point here. Oh, yeah. You, you just can't keep doing the dance. At some point, no, he, they, needs they, fresh, they, he needs a fresh start, and they need to get some return from their investment. And we they, all know they, how they, highly talented he is. And, and I like the fact that he was playing in the 10 for the U.S. It looked nice there. Yeah. We'll see what the future. Mm -hmm. um, let us uh, – Tyler Adams, give us an update on him because he's kind of been out of sight, out of mind, and we all love him in midfield for the U.S. It's probably best that he's put out of sight, out of mind because you don't want to sit there and cling to somebody that you don't know when he's going to be playing, um, whether it was a botched surgery last 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 summer and, and he comes back, plays 20 minutes. Is there a mention there was a botched surgery? No, I don't know if it was a botched surgery or not. I'm just saying, I'm just speculating why it didn't work in the first place, right? You know, he... He had a surgery once, and then he comes back, plays twenty minutes, and then it's it's injured again. Um, yeah. That's something's not right. You know, I'm just saying. You know, you don't want to have to speculate. Things things are ugly. Things are, but I'm not suggesting that. But I'm suggesting things didn't go according to plan. Um, uh, we're looking at probably February, March till he's back. But the 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 real question is is like a what's going to be left for him when he comes back. Um, I mean, uh, Burnmouth have been much worse than expected. They're, they're in the relegation zone. They lost six to one over the weekend to man city. So what happens if they get relegated? He probably can't run away from another relegation. You know, he did that with Leeds, but now if you're looking at a, a guy with, you know, damaged goods, what is Burnmouth is going to want to play him? but then what are they, they don't want to take the loss of selling him for a little because no one's his market's not going to be there. He's probably going to have to stick around in the championship if they get relegated, um, uh, or or they'll have to or they'll have to be some kind of a mutual, uh, you know, termination or something like that. I or or low set low low sale price. It's a he's entering into a real, you know, dangerous situation with his club club and 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 um, where he's going to need to find career. a place to play and his career. And his career. Um, it's, it's at a crossroads right now. And unfortunately not a lot of it's in his hands. Like this is, this is, you know, he's turning himself over to medicine and, you know, you wish the best, but you know, at some point you just want to give him space and, and the national team just has to just kind of move on without him. And then if they get him back at a later date, great. If not, just, you know, just keep moving on. Uh, I'm not writing Tyler Adams off. No, I'm not. That well, I wouldn't kid's write got him off, intestinal but, fortitude. I'm not right. You know, at off. some point, you don't want to be building your team. You have to almost, look. They need a back. The national team needs a backup for Tyler. They've needed a backup for Tyler for a long time. Now, it, now it's a chance to find find that off. He'll be back at some point, but you don't want to just just to just to sit there and think about him every single camp. You know, he'll get back when he's back. One man's absence is another man's opportunity, Brian. You know that absolutely. All right. Uh, listen, thanks so much for coming on tonight. Great stuff going through all those players. Really good insight. Um, we'll talk to you real soon, but thanks again for closing the show out in big style tonight. Thanks very much, Glenn. Appreciate all right. it. American Soccer Now, Brian Sharetta, he's up to date on uh, all the American players and, and a lot of names that we don't know that if you follow his stuff, uh, you're going to get, and you may be tipped off to future stars. Mm -hmm. uh, that does it here tonight uh, for Soccer Matters on ESPN 97.5. Big thank you to Guillermo Lazo Romero, our producer. Also uh, subscribe at Spotify, Apple, Google. You can also get the podcast at ESPN975.com. And until next Tuesday night, remember, soccer matters.